What's up everybody, Spare with a Gun here from Sleepless Night Studios, and welcome to another update video. I'm sure all of you were probably expecting a new episode or series of some kind, uh, well, other than the, those of you that watched the first two episodes of 2021 and heard that I wasn't going to be doing that yet. Um, so, I wanted to kind of do another quick update video. Well, I say quick, it may not be quick, as because I've, in the time that I took off for December, for the Christmas break and stuff, and catching a cold and all that stuff, um, I had a lot of time to think about the channel and stuff and things, so I have some other ideas that um, will probably be taking shape in 2021, and I wanted to go over them with you guys. Um, not only to get your feedback, but also to kind of give you a heads up as to some of the things that may or may not be changing, and some of the things that I may be adding or removing, etc. Um, so, and first of all, <laughs> I said removing. Don't worry, Inspiration Series is not going anywhere. Um, so first off, I wanted to talk about the uh, Patreon page for the channel. Um, if you'll notice, the first two episodes of 2021 did not come out in a unlisted, only Patreon fashion. Um... I have decided to discontinue that idea of releasing them a week early and whatnot, at least for now. If something changed down the road, I may go back to it. Uh, the main reason being, I was hoping that it would... The idea of getting content early might uh, encourage some people to... Uh, move towards the Patreon page and stuff, and then I would have enough uh, interaction feedback from that angle to then also operate um, in a week early capacity. What I found was I don't actually have that many Patreons, and the ones that I do have I wasn't getting a whole lot of feedback on, at least not within the time frame I was looking for of a week. And so it basically just ended up resulting in... Uh, me putting out a video a week early that I wasn't getting any feedback on, and then I would have to be making another episode for that audience on, on Patreon before I got any feedback on the first episode. I hope that makes sense. It might be a little confusing, but suffice to say, it didn't really achieve what I wanted it to, and all it really ended up doing was... Um, resulting in a disconnect between you guys and myself when I was making videos in terms of asking for feedback or ideas. I was getting them at a delayed interval, which was not helpful, and I think it kind of um, ended up causing more harm than good. So I decided to take that away. However, I did recently uh, get another Patreon and, and stuff like that, so it, the idea is not lost on me that that could be something that may have appealed to some, and now it's not there. So I wanted to give a heads up as far as I'm still trying to figure out alternatives to that kind of idea. Um, unfortunately, I'm not in a financial position where I can give away a lot of free things that cost me to make. Um, and I intended, I do have the merch store with t-shirts and mugs and hoodies and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I was hoping to be able to add those as Patreon benefits. However, as I started digging more into the uh, content manager side of Teespring and stuff, which is what I'm, I went through for my store, I didn't realize that there actually are certain ratios. So you have to have sold a certain amount before they, before they will eat the cost and let you do free promotionals and things like that. So um, if I was in a position where I could eat the cost, I probably would do so to add those as benefits. Um, but in lieu of my current circumstances, as well as the way that Teespring is doing it, I don't see that as the option I was hoping for. Um, so I'm looking for benefits that I could give. And if you guys have any suggestions, I'm all ears. Um, I just wanted to clarify that, that... Um, I'm not in a position to do a lot of, like, uh, paid things or things that would cost to make. Um, but if it's certain things like um, 
I, I I did do I do have the uh, Patreon roles on Discord on my Discord server. So if you are a patron, you should have access to um, Patreon specific rooms and things. Um, and I try and always put Patreon opinions above other viewers because they are actually supporting me financially and stuff, regardless of amount. It's just they're um, doing more than just the average viewer. And I don't mean that to be, you know, putting down on any other view. It's more raising up the, the Patreon people than putting down my normal viewers. You guys know I love you guys. Um, so the thing for Patreon. The only thing that I've really come up with that I still don't have the logistical uh, stuff ironed out as to how I would do it is I did like the idea of doing live streams that are exclusive to Patreon members. However, I don't know how to do that on Twitch. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how to limit who can see you and stuff on Twitch, or even if you can. Um, so the only thing I thought of was possibly doing something on Discord, because then I could limit it to a specific, I could make a specific Patreon streaming room. Um, the only other issue is time and, and stuff in terms of time I have to dedicate to that kind of thing. So I have a feeling, uh, you guys can let me know what you think about this, I have a feeling of doing... If I did Patreon-only streams on, like, Discord, I'm thinking of doing them casual, almost like behind the scenes, where I usually am pretty... I wouldn't say edited in terms of censoring, but edited in terms of quality on my videos and things that um, I try and cut out certain... I try. I know some of you are probably uh, rolling your eyes because I've notoriously done a, a lot of fluff stuff in some of my episodes where I just didn't have the time to... Um, fill out the rest of the episode with anything meaningful at times. Uh, but, which I, I, by the way, I am making that an effort in 2021 to kind of cut out doing that as often. Like, try and do that only when absolutely necessary. But if I can, you may see more highly edited, like, clip-based episodes where they only go for a few minutes at a time and then cut. I'm going to try and do that more if time, if my schedule allows it. Sometimes it's it's hard to explain the behind the scenes if you've never tried to do your own YouTube stuff and things, but sometimes, you know, you're trying to get the video done and then you've got personal things that you got to do and the video has to go out because you told everyone it's going out, so you just don't have any options. But if I, if I have the ability to, I'm going to try and do more editing um, in 2021. That said, um, I do try and manage quality a lot in terms of, uh, I, I kind of, I, I don't act very differently, but I probably put on a more professional facade, if you will, um, if I, or, or something to that effect. Whereas if I did Discord server um, things, it may just be me casually doing stuff and not really behaving in a, okay, guys, let's do this episode kind of thing. It may just be me being me chilling and, and playing a game and you just can happen to, to chime in, watch, message me, whatever. So that's one, that's the, the best idea I've come up with to replace the, um, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, week, the week early release. The other aspect to that would be games that I don't often play on my channel. For example, I've only really been doing Space Engineers right now, but I've been playing Minecraft and other things that some people may not want to see series on. There may not be enough of a demand there, but if you're a Patreon or something and that's what I'm playing, I may just randomly casually stream it kind of thing if, you know, in a Patreon room. It's an idea. Let me know what you guys think. Um, it's something I'm throwing around with, but I'm not locked into it. Now, let's get to the what series is going to be next thing, or what are we doing with the time that I was spending on Subnautica Below Zero. So as you know, sometime in December, I don't remember when, it was whenever I decided to take my vacation, break, sick leave thing. Um, I did a, a short little straw poll about Minecraft just focusing on Space Engineers or Empyreon. Um, for the most part, I would say that it was a little more split than I expected, um, but it did eventually, I think, lean more towards Empyreon than Minecraft, I believe, as well as some comments on the video that were not part of the straw poll for other things. And it got me thinking, because a couple of people mentioned maybe doing some uh, something outside of what I typically do. 
Now, some of you that have been around long enough on my channel know I used to do a lot of different things. And that's because as a gamer, when in my personal life, I play a lot of different things. I don't usually play the same um, games all the time or just one game 24-7. I'm, I'm usually into three or four games at one time, actually. And they usually can be multi-genre. Um, but... So some of you may still remember that. Some of you that were making comments about uh, maybe try something different, maybe new and didn't know that I've done a lot of different things on the channel before. And a lot of that's just time. Back when I did a lot of different things, I was doing like two episodes per day or something, and I was doing nothing but YouTube, essentially. Um, and now that I'm trying to do stuff like uh, working on my book and things like that and trying to balance personal and YouTube life and things... I've cut out a lot of those series to make time for other things. Now, um, I have it kind of tiered in my head because I thought of a lot of different things, mo far more than just Minecraft and Imperium. I, th I thought of a bunch of different ideas. And I'm going to explain them a little bit so you guys know, because one of the other comments was kind of like, well, if you played it this way, I'd like this, but if you played it this way, I'd like this. So I'm going to kind of add what games I'm thinking in order of how I'm thinking about them, like which ones I think are the most ones I would probably be fine doing or want to do, um, as well as how I would do them kind of thing. That's that's the other angle that I'm approaching is, because some people may be like, well, I'd like to see, uh, I think one of the things was kind of like, if you're going to be building ships in Imperion, that'd be cool, but if you're just doing this, then do my, you know, stuff like that. So my first tier, and I'll probably have graphics things on the screen if time allows me to do that. I'm, I'm a, li a little pressed for time at the time I'm recording this before it needs to be uploaded. So I don't know if I'm going to have time to add footage of every game. So for those of you that may not be familiar in a list of things, but there will be a straw poll that kind of includes all of these. I do highly encourage you to use that. I'll probably put a card here. Um, in the top corner, and it'll be in the description, etc. I do look at the comments, but it's far easier to gauge everybody's opinions when it's just a graph and you can just see which one's winning kind of thing, like a poll. Um, I, I get some people just feel more comfortable commenting or whatever, but if you can, I'd prefer to use the straw poll uh, for your actual air quote voting. Um, but I do check the comments and stuff as well. But, so the first tier that I'm thinking about is kind of a sticking to what I'm doing, but um, optimizing my focus, I suppose. Anyway, so one option is to not do another series at all and just focus on using that extra time to improve the current Let's Play. Ergo, I would get more done in each episode. There would be more progress made. Um, probably better edit it, you know, things like that, that I'm, I'm spending twice as much time on that series of my current Let's Play rather than, um, a third series. Another option is to essentially the, <laughs> once again, the survival series, the Let's Play of Space Engineers has kind of been hijacked into a Let's Build currently because I'm trying to design my capital ship so that I can make a blueprint so that then I can go back into survival and actually build it because I hate the idea of wasting time and resources to try and build and design it in survival. I mean, building it's one thing because you're going to need the resources and that's part of the survival aspect, but designing it and knowing what you're doing, I can make sure that it all works and it's tested and blah, 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 blah. So it's kind of turned into a let's, let's build. So that is the other option is separating um, and having a separate let's build where I'm just doing creative builds and things. And I've actually thought about this. I've never considered myself a good builder, but I have had a few people that have commented on the current capital ship saying that it was helping them watching me uh, plan out and figure out things and fix problems and stuff like that. Um, so I am curious if you guys were interested in a let's build, if it would be more of a uh, uh, an actual let's build of like, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm just making this up as I go, or more of a, I've already built this, let me show you how I did it, tutorial kind of thing. That would be a little outside of my comfort zone for me, but I'm willing to try it if you guys are actually interested in it, only because of my confidence in my building ability, I don't think I'm that good. 
Um, so that's more up to you guys that if you disagree and you'd want to see that, I'm open to experimenting with it. By the way, I should have said this in the intro. I'm kind of personally, my own, my own perspective on it. I'm kind of viewing January as my month to experiment with what else I want to do in 2021 with the channel. So the schedule, the releases, the, what we do, that may end up being a little more fluid as we try different things. If there was a lot of things that were really close, like some people said this and it was like, you know, 49, 51 kind of splits. I may experiment and do an episode of each thing here and there and put out some random videos in January as I'm just kind of feeling things out. Just as a side note. The other option for continuing in the same vein that we're in is bringing back the Reverse Engineers series. I know a lot of you have mentioned this build would be good for Reverse Engineers, and I think a lot of you learned from it, um, quite a bit from it. Um, I think I had stopped it with a combination of due to time and view count, but now that I'm not trying to do Subnautica and things, I do have an extra slot for it, so it wouldn't really be out of my time that I normally record videos and stuff to do it. So I, I am um, potentially bringing it back the reverse engineers if everyone wants to see it. Now, this next one's a little interesting. It's the Programming 102 series. I've talked about this a lot. I've said I was working on it. I have chipped away at it a little at a time, but I've not actually taken the time to really sit down and just do it. If you guys think that that would give you the most bang for your buck, like you would get the most out of a tutorial about programming and scripting at Space Engineers, then there is a little bit of an asterisk with the 102 series. I would be taking the time that I would normally be spending on a third series to work on it. However, I don't want to release it like I did the 101 where it's episodic, like here's just a random episode. Here's just, I'm actually kind of going to structure it a bit more like a, a, a course kind of thing. And I have some ideas about that. Um, actually, one thing you guys could help me on with that is would you prefer a like huge long video, like a two hour video with a lot of timestamps all over the place so you could skip around to what you want or multiple little videos like five to 15 minute videos or something like that. Um, I've been debating and going back and forth about which one would be more convenient and better received. So let me know what you guys think. But the caveat with the Programming 102 series is if we decide, if like the voting was for that and everybody wanted it, and, and bear in mind, I'm going to do it eventually at some point. It's just if I'm doing other things, it's going to slow it down exponentially and it, I can't say when it would be done. If I'm working on it actively, then it would probably be done sooner. But the caveat to that is that I would probably be working on it for a few weeks before you guys see anything on it. Like you may not get any episodes till February or something like that because I'd be taking the time to work on it and record and edit it, but I, I plan on publishing it all at once. Like once the, the series is done, it's just going to go up, whether that's 30 videos in a day, whether that's one long three hour video, whatever. It's, it's just going to be one of those that I'm going to work on, and when it's done, then it's going up. So keep that in mind if you're going to vote for the 102 series that you may not see instant results. Now, the second tier, or that to me is kind of like that I'd still be interested in doing it. It's still kind of in my mood at the moment, um, but it's not really like staying in the same vein of keeping everything space engineers, which I'm not really intentionally trying to keep everything space engineers. I'm just kind of looking at it from a, a analytic standpoint. If every, if all of my space engineers content does better than everything else on my channel, then maybe I should focus more on that. That's all the reason I'm bringing the, that all the tier one stuff was all space engineers related. So tier two would be Minecraft, Monster Hunter World, Outward, or Hardland. Now, there's a couple of different things with this. Minecraft, obviously, for you guys know from my December video that I started up a server for Bass Player KG and Adrian Wannafly and myself. Um, we're kind of doing it casually. We've been playing it for fun. I would kind of be recording it when there's shenanigans going on in terms of multiplayer, and when there's not a lot going on with everybody or they're doing something else or not even on, I would probably do my own content um, by myself. It would be on the same server, obviously, but it would just kind of be my idea and not involve them. But if we were going to go slay the Ender Dragon or whatever, then that would probably be group content. 
So that's one thing. It would not really be like a let's build and let's try and build stuff. I mean, there would be building mechanics involved in it, but it would be a bit more of a casual let's play kind of style. Now, I recently got Monster Monster Hunter Monster. <laughs> that goes back a ways. Monster Hunter World um this December sometime. One of their one of their uh, Christmas sale type of things. I got Outward as well at that same time. Both games I've had my eye on, both games I thought would be really fun, but I wasn't sure if I would like them enough or if they would be worth it enough for me to pay full price for them. Both of them went like below 50% off or something at one point, and I picked them both up, and I have enjoyed them. I've been playing them in my off time. Now, Monster Hunter World's a little slippery slope because I know that it's been out for a while, even though Iceborne... I did get Iceborne, by the way, as well. Um, I know that Iceborne is uh, relatively new, but they're both kind of like they've been out. Now the talk of the town is the Monster Hunter Rise and all that kind of stuff. So I can understand if everyone's like, eh, there's been a lot of other YouTubers that have made videos on it. We're fine. It, but I have seen some people comment on like, I've always liked this XYZ game and always like wanted your wanted to see what your take on it was or your approach. So I figured I'd throw it out there because I'm playing it on my own time anyway. Um, so if everybody wants to see it or something, it wouldn't really uh, take any extra time away from me. The other issue with Monster Hunter World is that it is a bit more... How do I put it? It's a bit more gameplay-y to me than like a Dragon Age or a Mass Effect like story-driven... Uh, where there's a lot of like choices and changing of the events and things. It's a little more straightforward than a lot of those. And a lot of the content of time would probably be fighting the monsters. So I personally, as a viewer mentality, could see it getting redundant for you guys. So I didn't know if there would be enough of an interest there or not. There is a story to it and stuff, but I mean, let's be honest, majority of your time is going to be spent you know, hunting down monsters. And I don't know the game well enough to be making, like, tutorial videos on it or anything like that. So keep that in mind. is just an option. Outward is an interesting game, for those of you that don't know, because it's kind of a Minecraft RPG without the block building kind of thing. It's like a survival RPG, which is a really interesting concept. And although some of the graphic levels and stuff and animations are a little janky... I like the overall concept and the mechanics of the game well enough that I wouldn't... Again, I'm playing it off and on in my personal time anyway, so if that's something new, it's a little different, it's outside the space and building, it's more RPG adventuring, if that's something that would shake things up and be a refreshing breath of fresh air, I don't mind doing that. Um, so that's an idea. Hardland's kind of in the similar boat with all... That's why they're in the same tier, is they're all kind of falling under the same thing. Now, the one caveat with Hardland, there is a little asterisk with this one as well. I did try and play it a while back, um, like years ago when it first came out, and it was kind of in too incomplete of a state, in my opinion, to really play it, so I kind of dropped it. So I have actually played it on my channel before. If you're interested and don't know anything about it, you could check those out, but I'd encourage you to check out more recent stuff because they've gone into full release late, uh, like this last year or something. Now, I did have a couple issues with it crashing in like a specific spot and it kept doing it, and I had to like reload a save when I was playing around with it. So the asterisk there is if I can play it. Like, if you guys want to, that's fine, but if it keeps crashing and I can't progress, I probably wouldn't go with that one. Um, now, Tier 3 is a little mix of kind of the spacey and survival still, um, but... It's like a little different from the space engineer stuff. I'm it, it'd be stationers, astroneer, Empyreon, or No Man's Sky. Now I'm gonna break down why I mentioned all three of these, and yes, Empyreon is on here. Now the reason it's so low on the list is not because I don't like it. It's just because I have played a lot of space engineers, and although I have been told, and I've played it before, I know they're not the same game. They are very similar in the building aspects and things, and I'm concerned about it turning into the same issue, where yes, there's more, sur there's a lot more survival components in Imperion, and frankly, I feel like station, uh, station, yeah, space. <laughs> space engineers. There's too many ears in here, basically. Um, 
I do feel like space engineers could learn a lot from Empyreon in terms of making their worlds feel more lived in, because that's one of the, my biggest complaint with space engineers. You play Minecraft, there's stuff. There's animals, there's passive animals, there's hostile mobs, there's spawning mechanics, and space engineers is like you have spiders and wolves, and they all kind of do the same thing. They don't have any unique loot from them. There's no reason. It, you know, you in Minecraft, you'd build creeper farms so you can get gunpowder. Why would you need spider farms and space engineers? You wouldn't. You know, so Empyreon, I think, took one from Minecraft's playbook there. It's not quite as robust as Minecraft. I don't know that anything will ever topple Minecraft in terms of how all the mechanics mesh very well together. But Empyreon does a much better job. Having said that, you still ultimately end up building ships and things, and it uses a similar grid system, and I'm concerned about them feeling samey enough to me as a player that it induces boredom and redundance. Or mundun, mund, yeah, I think I used that right. Maybe. I don't know. Redundancy is probably more accurate. That you're already doing the same thing in Space Engineers, and then you switch over to this, and you end up doing a lot of the same things. That's my only concern with Empyreon and why haven't already just been like, yeah, everyone wants to see that, let's do that. Stationeers has also been doing quite... Well, actually, Stationeers and Astroneer have been doing a lot of updates. That Since the last time I played them on my channel, they've done a lot of things to rebalance, polish, features, etc. and so on. I would be okay with either of those games. I'm interested in both of them, I like both of them already, and they've added a ton of features. Um... There is one element that I have to talk about. Well, actually, let me get to No Man's Sky first. They've also done a lot of updates on No Man's Sky, and I never quite finished it or anything either, so that's another option as well if you guys... And it's still kind of in the space, base building, etc. Uh, vein that you guys may want to see more of that. Now, there is one caveat that I need to add here. My mentality has changed. You may have noticed this if you watched my last Space Engineers Let's Play video because I even brought it up. I've been playing Minecraft recently, and I haven't played Minecraft in a couple of years. And because I've been on the server with uh, Base Play and Adrian WannaFly and stuff like that, and we've been kind of going back to the roots of Minecraft, I've rediscovered that mechanical interest that I've realized I really haven't approach space engineers the same way I approach Minecraft. Minecraft, I try and hide blocks with shifting blocks and do a lot of redstone things. I'm not that great at it, but I try and do a lot of redstone stuff uh, because I like all of the hidden doors and, um, you know, automatic farms because they do stuff. I like all the mechanisms and things. So I'm actually, you'll probably notice me trying to introduce more engineering and mechanical, not just block building and ship design, but actually building in mechanical features into my builds um, in in the next few months and probably into the future because I've kind of had like an epiphany where I'm like, I feel like I'm playing this wrong. I'm not playing this like an engineer. What have I been doing with my life? You know, kind of thing. So having said that, Stationeers, Astroneer as well, but particularly Stationeers would really scratch that itch because it's very mechanical. It's very like building... Uh, circuit logic and farms and temperature controls and gas separators. And so Stationeers would be a good fit for me right now in terms of interest. Um, Astroneer, I've always just kind of liked Astroneer. It's whimsical, it's it's light, and it's fun. You know, it's it's got that kind of bubbly, positive, lighthearted mentality to it. And they've added a ton. They've whole, they've like reworked the research system from what I understand and blah, blah, blah. So either of those two, I'd be perfectly fine with. Um, I'm not sure about No Man's Sky only because I feel like I would want to start over because I didn't finish the new storyline and things. And I don't know if you guys would really be interested in starting over again. Um, so I don't know about that one, but it isn't a bad option. Um, but Empyreon is one of those that I'm, I, like, if I haven't, if I hadn't been playing Space Engineers for so long, I'm, af I'm basically afraid of burnout, is what I'm afraid of. Uh, just putting it bluntly, is it's like, I'm afraid, I'm, I've always kind of teetered with burnout with Space Engineers, because I play it a lot on my channel. And so it's one of those where I've always kind of teetered with burnout on that game already. So to introduce something that's that close to it, I'm concerned that I'll just kind of like not be into it. And then I'm concerned about the quality of my videos 
Because one thing I have learned is I try and do what you guys want to see done, but I have done stuff where I wasn't really in the mood to play it. And I go going back and watching my content, I wasn't really that satisfied with it because it was kind of eh. I'm just going through the motions. So I don't really want to do that. I want to try and avoid it if I can. I mean, if there's just a unanimous, we all want to see Imperion, then we'll go with it. But um, I just wanted to kind of, in the interest of transparency, let you guys know where my head's at and why I'm thinking of all these different options and stuff. But know that all of these I've put on here, I am fine playing. Um, and I don't mind doing Let's Plays on them, so pick whatever you like, and out of my rationale and hearing ways that I'm planning on playing it, that's fine. There is another option I did think of a while back with Imperion with the whole building mentality, and I actually thought about doing it with Space Engineers, um, although I'm kind of in the middle of building a ship right now. To avoid getting stuck in a Let's Build in the middle of a Let's Play, I may do... Uh, basically like community builds, like let you guys work on ships that you would want me to see or you would want me to use, you think are cool. And um, I, I don't know that I'd want just ones picked, but kind of like where I do the inspiration series for Space Engineers and let you guys submit your builds, um, I'd probably do that with Imperion with the intent of rather than showcasing them, actually using them or something. Um, so, you know, I probably would only stipulate, like, maybe color schemes or, and then give, like, style or ideas or something, and then just go from there. Um, so that's another idea that would keep, uh, Imperion slightly different if we went with that, so food for thought, keep that in mind. Okay, so that's kind of my summary on the games that I'm thinking about doing for the third slot on my schedule. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about in... Uh, as far as changes for 2021, is you may have already noticed I changed my intro and outro. I like doing that every year or so because I just get bored of the same ones. And there had been a few complaints about um, my other outro kind of feeling like it was drag or intro feeling like it was dragging on and stuff. So I wanted to do something a little more fast paced. And so far, everyone's really liked it, which is cool. And I appreciate the feedback and everything. I really like that everyone's uh, and, and thought it was as cool as I did. Um, having said that, I will probably be doing a little bit more uh, graphical editing in my videos. Like, um, I, I'm not typically one of those YouTubers that tries to play into the trends as far as, you know, um, do, doing all of the posting everything on social media and doing stuff like this to try and drum ups. I'm kind of more of the, I'm going to post what I'm going to post. And if you like it, you like it and go from there. That said, I don't always play well with the algorithm because I don't play the algorithm basically. Um, I try not to, I try and avoid clickbait titles unless I'm being funny and I don't usually put things, I actually hate putting things in the thumbnail that I don't actually end up using or anything because that drives me nuts when YouTubers do that. Um, so just things that a lot of YouTubers actually do to play the algorithm game. Having said that, it does, it has become apparent to me that the YouTube algorithm has not really been doing very, uh, 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 actually it's not even been doing a decent job, it's been doing a terrible job at letting people know when I post a video or something, even if you're subscribed to me, especially if you're not. If you're not, then it really doesn't let you know. Um, so you may hear me halfway through a video or something start pushing the whole uh, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bells and all that kind of stuff because I have noticed that a lot of YouTubers that have actually grown in their channels have been doing that. I wouldn't think it would need to be said because to me it's fairly obvious. If you like the people, you subscribe if you want to know. But I digress. It's the internet. So um, I will probably be doing that more and having graphical things on the screen for stuff like that um, and, and stuff of that nature and trying to improve my overall video quality by adding more graphics and um, adding a little layer of polish. Now... Leading into that is I'm changing my editing software. Actually, I've changed my editing software. Um, I've gone from, I used to use Premiere Pro CS5 because I got it a while back and didn't want to upgrade because Adobe costs a lot of money. Um, and I don't have the uh, steady income to do the, the monthly cloud or whatever it is. Anyway, um, 
So, and I found there is a free software. If you guys are interested in getting into video editing and don't want to pay Adobe's really high prices, I encourage you to check this one out because it's free and like legal. It's not like you had to pirate it or anything. It's just free. Um, there is a paid version. It's DaVinci Resolve. It's done by Blackmagic Design, I believe. Um, there is a paid version, but from what I can tell, you'd have to be, like, in film industry or something before you'd probably need anything that's in the pro version. The free version has pretty much everything that your standard, like, Premiere and After Effects type programs have, and it's free. So, I, the other big thing, because it's, I don't know if it's because it's newer or they legitimately use Blackmagic, I mean, Blackmagic Design, maybe they... But the render times are ridiculously shorter on uh, DaVinci Resolve compared to Premiere. Premiere, I was running a 30-minute episode, could take anywhere from an hour and a half to two to three hours, depending on quality settings and stuff like that. Similar, or I should say comparable, the, the settings aren't exactly the same, but comparable settings in DaVinci Resolve, and I'm doing a half hour episode in either like 20 to 30 minutes or something. Um, so the, <laughs> the, the, uh, the render times are drastically different, but the one big thing that I think uh, was a good reason that I switched was the the CS5 version of Premiere that I had did not support multi-audio tracks in a, in a video file. And some of this may not interest a lot of you, but I'm just explaining why there may be some hiccups or changes it, that you may notice in the quality of my videos as I'm trying to iron out the settings. Um... The dual audio track, basically short version, allows me that when I'm recording in OBS to separate my audio and the game audio. So if the game's too loud, but my audio is fine, I can turn me up, low, lower the game down, blah, 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 blah. Even effects, noise removal, things like that, I can add specifically to my audio, but not to the game so it doesn't distort the game. So there's a lot of benefits there. Um, the other aspect of that is it's uh, the, the playback in editing and stuff is a lot better for me because Premiere always chugged and it was hard to get a read on what is it going to look like when it's rendered. DaVinci does a lot better with you can hit play and kind of preview your video without a lot of artifacts and things like that. So overall, it was a good idea, but I'm still learning the program and I'm learning to how to tweak the settings for optimal YouTube stuff. So I would definitely like you guys' feedback if... Um, you notice anything if it even if it's good if or if it's bad if it's like man they look shinier and more more polished and sharper cool if it's like man they're more blocky and it looks lower quality I'd like to know about that as well um, audio settings as well because I'm still tweaking them I'm playing around with what volumes does what need to be set at and what effects do I need to use etc and so on so basically probably for a f quite a f for a few weeks give or take um, if you don't notice anything, that's fine. If it's like, yeah, it looks good, whatever, then that's fine. But if you notice anything specific that stands out to you about the video quality, um, or the audio quality or something, do let me know. And bear that in mind that if something looks wonky, that's probably why it is because I'm still trying to tweak all of the settings and things like that. With that, I think I've touched on everything that I kind of wanted to cover, um, so I think that's going to do it for this update episode, and hopefully we can get ironed out what we want to do moving forward so that we can start throwing in either a third series or putting more time into some of these other Space Engineer content ideas and stuff like that. Um, again, if you guys have any ideas for Patreon benefits, do let me know, feel free, um, and just kind of, I would say, keep uh, keep flexible, I suppose, in January because I'm probably going to be experimenting here and there with various little things. They range from setting tweaks, adding little graphics to the videos, to maybe I might throw out random uh, videos that you weren't expecting or something if I just take a whim and decide, I want to see how this rolls with everybody. But overall, I think that's going to cover all of the topics, so do keep all of that in mind and let me know what you guys think. 
Um, if you're going to comment on what game series to do next, I would appreciate the comment being more about how you'd want to see it played, but I'd appreciate the vote being done in the straw poll that's going to be included. And with that, we're going to wrap things up here for today. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.